Secretary. The chair uh, now recognizes um, Mr. Guthrie, our distinguished uh, ranking member of our subcommittee for five minutes for his opening statement. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here today. And today we're discussing the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services proposed fiscal year 2023 budget. All, today also marks just the second time that the Secretary has been before this subcommittee and when the Biden administration has extended the public health emergency five times. And we should hear more from our leaders of an agency that controls over $1 trillion in spending, and I call on my Democratic colleagues to hold more HHS oversight hearings. It's one of the most important duties that we as members of Congress have, and our constituents deserve better. One stark example is the lack of oversight on COVID-19 spending and response. The last time the administration testified on COVID-19 before the, the committee was in March of 2021, over a year ago. I know myself and other members of this committee have asked Secretary Becerra to provide a detailed plan for unwinding the COVID-19 public health emergency, and particularly how agencies in, intends on ensuring there are no significant disruptions as we transition uh, from these blank waivers as they expire. And we've yet to receive a response and hopefully we will do so soon. Oversight is especially important given the huge increases in funding requested by the Biden administration. The HHS budget before us today calls for a 12% increase in discretionary spending at HHS for fiscal year 2023. The budget specifically gives more than $6 billion combined boost in funding to the Centers for Disease Control and National Institutes of Health, both of which have come under fire recently over uh, controversial mask guidance and COVID-19 research funded by NIH using American taxpayer dollars. We need to hold NIH accountable. We need to also ensure taxpayer dollars are not going to labs engaging in risky gain-of-function research and ensure researchers are transparent about how they're spending taxpayer dollars from these funded research grants. The budget even increases spending for climate change initiatives at HHS, and, and through the 174-page budget that we have here, uh, it mentions climate change more than fentanyl. I am increasingly concerned that HHS has lost its way since President Biden took office, and these budget priorities reflect this change in course. HHS has become increasingly more politicized, which we saw with CDC school reopening and masking guidance, and less transparent with Congress, especially in the context of the use of COVID-19 relief funding that a recent STAT news article outlines. The agency has also taken a punitive one-size-fits-all approach to combating COVID-19 through onerous vaccine mandates. The Biden administration has always failed the American people by planning to revoke Title 42, which was used to prohibit migrants from entering the United States illegally to, spread, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. This poor decision comes despite the Biden administration extending the public health emergency for another 90 days in the same month without providing a clear plan of action to address what many expect will be a massive influx of migrants trying to enter the United States through our southern border. We have seen an unprecedented level of fentanyl and fentanyl-related substances entering our country through the southern border and killing thousands of Americans. Between 2020 and 2021 fiscal years combined, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol seized over 15,000 pounds of illicit fentanyl at our southwest border. This co coincided with the highest number of drug overdoses our country has ever experienced and the expected number of overdose deaths reaching 106,000 in the 12-month period ending in November 2021. We need to secure our borders and work to permanently schedule fentanyl-related substances to keep these poisons out of our communities. We can also do this while promoting public health programming, like the bill Mr. Tonko and I partner with, on, partnered on together. This legislation offers individuals seeking help overcoming their addiction with the resources they need to get back on their feet, like workforce services and peer support services. I finally am concerned with the department has continued to restrict access to proven medical advances, such as the first FDA-approved therapy to treat Alzheimer's disease in almost 20 years. Urge the Biden administration to swiftly repropose a new coverage policy that allows patients, doctors, and their families to make informed decisions about their treatment. HHS must get back on track to using its resources for solutions that will drive down healthcare costs for Americans, keep deadly drugs off our streets, and bring new breakthrough and potential life-saving cures to patients. Thank you, and I yield back.